Welcome back to John's Briefs, everyone. Here again with Terry Johnson from Firearms Legal Protection. Got a good one today. Remember the one out of Brazil, right? Five guys pull into his garage, jump out with guns. He drives them off with his own firearm. Great right. self-defense incident. Um, other than the fact that they all scampered off, although one of them left their wallet with their ID in it, which is pretty funny. Gotta love criminals. Yeah, stupid people. Um, but today I want to talk about Castle Doctrine and what Castle Doctrine means and maybe what it doesn't. Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. So Terry, why don't you give us a broad framework of what it means, what, what we talk about when we say Castle Doctrine. Castle Doctrine basically means, again, let me put the qualifier out here, it's going to depend upon your state. Every state is a little different, but from an overall perspective, Castle Doctrine basically means you have the ability to protect your home. So if someone comes in and they're a threat to you, you have the right to defend yourself in your home. Now, that gets a little dicey in some places because, again, we talk about the reasonableness aspect of the whole thing. You know, Was it reasonable that I got in an argument with my buddy over a football game? He said he's going to kick my behind, and I pull out a gun and shoot him because I'm in my house. No. You know, you can't do that. That's not how the castle doctrine works. However, if someone's breaking into your home, you know, there's in most cases a rebuttable presumption that that person is there to do you harm. Yeah, forcible entry is a thing. Correct, correct. And, and we've talked about forcible entry before. You know, that basically means that doesn't mean that someone has a crowbar or, you know, they've kicked the door in. They've Turning actually, a doorknob. That's forcible entry under the law. If it's not a, a entry on permission. Correct. Right. That is correct. They had to use some measure of force pushing the door open in order to get in without permission. That is correct. So the Castle Doctrine allows you to basically protect yourself in your own home. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take that a step forward and you look at stand your ground, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, and again, I know we're not trying to get into that overall discussion, but Stand your ground is an extension of the Castle Doctrine as long as you have a legal right to be where you are. And again, you're not committing a crime in right. most places. So. so if in your home you have a meth lab, correct, you probably don't have Castle Doctrine to help you out because you're in the commission of a crime correct. doing the meth lab thing, right? So Walter White, I'm sorry, you're in trouble. But uh, for most people, right, it's considered that in, you know, that idea, Castle Doctrine comes from a man's home as his castle and you have the correct. right to protect your, your home and no duty to retreat from your own home. That is correct. And, and so therefore, you know, you don't have to run away if somebody threatens you. Now, when you talk about somebody forcibly entering, you have a rebuttable presumption that they mean you harm, but you still have to act reasonably. Well, of course. I mean, you know, let's take the case in Dallas, for example, okay? Um, oh, and this boy. is the, the, the police officer that went yeah, to the wrong Geiger. home. Right. Yeah. Now, here's the thing that I want to want folks to keep in mind. What if the gentleman that was killed actually had a gun on him and shot her? Okay. Would he be reasonable in doing that? And the reason I asked the question is he would be using um, the parameters of the Castle Doctrine. Sure. If someone came in, it was forcible. But would you ask the question, well, did you stop? Did you say what's going on? Did you, you know, right. because in that particular case, she was using the Castle Doctrine that's because, what she tried to use. Because she thought it was her yeah. home. So did she act reasonably? And it's, we've done other videos on this. You know, what's reasonable? Well, look at her training. That's going to come into play. Right. Did she use verbal commands, you know? Well, but even though she was in her home, so she, she, so she thought she was in her home, right? Correct. So there's an interesting bit about the, presu the, the rebuttable presumption because so she comes in what she thinks is her home. It's not. She's just worked a 15-hour shift, so her mind is wiped. She's operating at like 5% of mental capacity. Correct. Comes in, sees a guy in her home, oh no, draws a gun and shoots him. But he's right. sitting on the couch eating a bowl of ice cream. Correct. Uh, he, he doesn't have a gun. He doesn't, you know, so again, is it reasonable that a guy sitting on the, the couch eating a bowl of ice cream is an imminent deadly threat? Would it have been reasonable for her to draw a gun and issue commands? Yeah, I believe that would have been reasonable. Very reasonable. You know, again, looking at his hands, but... 
some people firmly believe, well, you're in my house, you're here to do me harm, I'm going to shoot you. And we see in this particular case, you know, the, and the, the presumption, well, let me rephrase that. In this particular case, the fact that she wasn't or was, well, she was not in her own home is really irrelevant. It's did she act reasonably? Right. And because he, was, uh, he didn't have a gun in his hand, he wasn't making any threatening moves, he's sitting on the couch, then the jury said, I don't buy this whole thing that, that you needed to use deadly force. So it was right. a rebutted presumption. And, and again, <clears throat> if we reverse it, and she, walks, she walked into his house and he pulls a gun and he just shoots her and does the exact same thing, would that be reasonable? It doesn't seem like it would be exactly. unless she draws a gun. And then all of a sudden we've got a whole, you know, but again... Notice there's a rebuttable presumption. We didn't say there's an absolute presumption. So again, if, if I'm in my home and somebody just opens my front door and walks in, which is a forcible entry. Correct. Now maybe, it's again, it's a mistake of fact and my drunk neighbor comes home or my house looks just like the next guy's house. It's not the way my neighborhood works, but you know, sure. in some people's neighborhood it is. <clears throat> and if I just go, oh, no, he opened my front door and I shot him. Well, wait a minute, now I got to ask. It was reasonable that I do that. Now, it might be reasonable. I hear the door open. In my world, I got teenagers and you know, sure. family members coming and going. So, uh, but, but say I don't, and I draw, I have my, my handgun on my person, and I go, hey, what are you doing in my house? And guy goes, whoa, man, hey, this is my house. No, it's not. Get out. What are you doing? Or it's, Bill, what the heck are you doing? Exactly. Bill, right. why, why, why are you, you here? Knock? Why are you here? That's right. all reasonable. Right? Oh, but Bill, my next door neighbor, walked in my front door, so I shot him. Why? What well, did you see? Yeah, what did you see? And then you're going to go back, and what's the relationship with you and Bill? Have you guys yeah. had some issues Got here? beef. Yeah, and, and you guys are, you know, there are other ways to handle that. So just because, again, Castle Doctrine removes your uh, necessity of retreat, it doesn't give you carte blanche. You can't just shoot somebody that walks through your front door. You still have to act reasonably. You know, there was a case back in Michigan. Uh, there was a young lady that went to a the wrong house, apparently about 3.30 in the morning. She's banging on the door, and this gentleman uh, decides to answer the door with a shotgun. Okay? Actually, he shot through the door. Oh, boy. Okay. She died, and on the first, you know, his first words out of his mouth to the police were, well, I didn't know it was loaded, you know, I hadn't used this in a long time. And, so now he's acting recklessly. Yep. But then he gets an attorney. His second first statement is, oh, I was in imminent fear for my life. Well, they, again, use the presumption, the rebuttable presumption against him. It's like, yep, she was there, let's say, to do you harm, but however, you weren't in fear. Right. You said this, 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 and this. And who, open, who answers the door by shooting a shotgun through it? Yeah, you just don't. So... That, again, gets back to the reasonable, reasonableness of what we're talking about. Guys, you got to act reasonably. I, I think, if anything, we, what we see again and again is the overarching standard of legal self-defense is reasonableness. Now, what's reasonable in your jurisdiction is maybe different than in mine. What is reasonable to a jury of your peers might be different than a jury of mine. Correct. So, act reasonably, and I think act conservatively on the side of reason, and I think you'll be okay even in your home. Terry, thanks for the knowledge. John, thank you. 